by popular request, I'm going to show you one of my own games. This was played a long time ago in 1990 in a tournament in Norway in Gausdal, which is in the mountains. I used to love this tournament. You can go skiing in the morning and then play chess in the afternoon. This is not a spectacular game, but it's one that I'm really proud of. There are some, I think, some really nice moments in it. So I had the black pieces and I was playing against the Swedish Grandmaster Harry Schussler. So it's a Queen's Gambit declined. Bishop g5, h6, hits the bishop, which comes back. And e3, and I played b6, the Tartico variation. So the idea is to put that bishop on the long diagonal. Bishop d3, bishop b7. And now in order to keep that bishop locked in, Schussler exchanged bishop for knight and then took on d5 so that you know this pawn is well blockaded by the pawn on d4 and that means this bishop is locked in here rook c1 so if black does nothing then there's potentially pressure here so i broke out with c5 just putting some pressure on this pawn on d4 and bishop b1 so that means he wants to be able to recapture on d4 with a piece. Pawn takes, knight takes. But I think black already has a, a fairly comfortable game just by keeping up the pressure on this point. So if white castles here, then black can equalize straight away with knight takes knight, for example. Um, but knight takes knight and castles, you know, he wants to try to keep a little advantage here by occupying that d4 square. Now watch out for the tactics. Of course, if bishop takes pawn, then queen c2 threatens a checkmate, threatens the bishop, threatens that bishop. Okay, that's we've seen enough. So after knight e2, I played bishop b5. Just pinning that knight for the moment and just activating that bishop. So rook e1 just steps away from the pin. And now rook c8. So he exchanged rooks. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty placid start. Like I said, it's not a spectacular game. But I think what I'm proud of is that from quite a dry position, I managed to squeeze something. So g6, I think that's an important move. Obviously, it covers f5, so there's no tactic there. Uh, but also, it's important to give the king a safe square on a dark square. Not, you know, obviously not safe on h7. Well, it, impossible to move to h7. A pretty standard move. Queen d2. Well, um, how does black get anything from this position? I mean, it looks, if anything, should be better for white. There's an isolated pawn. Um, if white please moves like rook d1 and maybe maneuvers this bishop to a2 to attack this, um, then that could be pretty nice for white. But, well, let's let's take a look. I played this move, bishop a6. Well, I like that move a lot. So it allows the queen to run out to a4. Just keeping tabs on that knight, but also looking at this pawn as well. And looking at some squares on the, on the c-file too. And so, for example, if rook c1, then I can exchange and queen a4. That's a little bit annoying for white, actually, with some pressure here. Maybe the queen can come in here or here. So Schussler played h3 just to give his king some luft. And queen a4 anyway. So a little bit of pressure. No, no great threats at the moment, but just keeping white, keeping white honest here. A3 looks reasonable. Now, what can black do next? It looks like there are there are no openings at all. But this next move I really like. It's slightly counterintuitive. But I played queen a5. So offering exchange of queens. And actually, yeah, the queen can't step too far away well obviously you know there's a problem here i mean to to step back 
seems very passive. So he exchanged off. So I've inflicted some damage to my own pawns, but actually I thought it was worth it considering that the rook now controls this open file. Sometimes it's possible to attack down here as well. Um, and that pawn is going to come in useful just cramping those two pawns on a3 and b2. And you can see that, well, white has no really active play here. Because I control that open file, then white has to be careful. So bishop a2. So he wants to take this pawn. So bishop c4. So if that's exchanged, I'll probably recapture with a rook, sometimes with the pawn, but probably the rook. Uh, yeah, something like this, and then a4, just to cramp those pawns. And then, yeah, I'd like to bring the king all the way up here um, to try and put pressure on the knight. And you can see it's because the rook controls the open file, that gives black just slight chances here. So rook c1, so Schussler took the opportunity to, to challenge on the open file. So a4, that prevents any nonsense with b3, or potentially anyway, and just fixes those pawns, so that's quite nice. So rook c2. Now, I, I mean, it's possible now perhaps to move this knight, uh, you know, somewhere here, I, I don't know where. But I thought the best thing to do was actually just to eliminate that. And then just bring the king. And my idea is to put the king on d6 and then to unpin with rook c6. And then I will be, of course, be threatening to take there. And what I want is for white to exchange. And then I'll be able to use the king and bring the king to d5. So basically, black has the better chances here because that king gets to the, the center quicker than white's king. But, well, proving this that white's, black has an advantage here is difficult. But anyway, let's see. b3. So that gets rid of that potentially weak pawn on b2. So an almost symmetrical pawn structure. But I still have the same plan. My king gets to the center quicker than white's. Rook c6. So you can see the plan now. So now there's no pin, I'm threatening to take here. And if bishop takes bishop, then that will make room for the king to come to d5. That's the whole point. One could also consider playing to the, the king pawn end game as well, but more on that later. So that's that's the idea, and you can see how important it is to, to bring the king up the board. So rook c3. And now, well, okay, how, what, what does black do next? Because at the moment, the king hasn't got an entry into the position. So I played rook b6. So the idea is that if bishop takes bishop, I can win back the piece and I don't lose a pawn. Okay, that's the game continuation. Uh, if We'll have a look at that in a second. If the bishop comes back to c2, then this is rather wonderful. Because now the rook has freedom to, to just buzz into white's position, and that's rather unpleasant. So white is really tied down here. Now, again, forcing a win, well, we're a long way from that, but black has definite pressure here. You know, that rook can be very annoying for white. You know, it might it might spin around here. And of course, don't forget that black has yet to, you know, use these, these kingside pawns as well. That might be an opportunity to squeeze a little bit more there. Or, you know, on, on a good day, maybe advance the A pawn. Um, that might help. Anyway, there's pressure. But rook b, whoops, hang on, <laughs> excuse me, rook b6 just played. Bishop takes bishop, rook c6, so that pin, and pawn takes bishop, and now the king steps up. This is the point. And of course, if that pawn can be taken successfully, then black is well on the road to victory in this position. Um, I mean, white 
can't protect that pawn. King here, then the rook just checks. King has to, has to move away and king takes pawn. Everything's wonderful. So Schussler played instead rook e3. So his idea is if king takes pawn, then the king is checked back and the king blockades. And then there are two possibilities, perhaps rook d4 and then rook takes pawn or, or perhaps rook e8. But yeah, I, I think the key thing here is that the, the king reaches the, the c3 square to blockade the pawn. Now, I was in a bit of time pressure. You know, what do you do? I, suddenly my opponent looks like he's getting some activity. Didn't want to go in for king takes pawn. You know, I was looking at ways to try and squeeze a little bit of advantage out of that position, but couldn't, couldn't see anything. So, well... I uh, I had to calculate <laughs> very quickly in this position. Uh, I had, I don't know, two or three minutes left to get to the time control at move 40. Um, but if you get this wrong, then you can lose. But, well, I thought I got it right, and I played rook c6. So if white avoids the king and pawn endgame, rook c3, then king takes pawn, and we're, we're, we're on easy street again. <laughs> Black is just winning that position, very easy. So Schussler exchanged rooks. And now we have this, this standoff in the middle of the board. So whoever cracks first is going to lose. If white king steps back, I'll take the pawn. If black's king steps back, then white will win by taking that one. So the point is, who is going to run, run out of pawn moves first? Well... Of course, I didn't guess this. I'd calculate it out. But there are a couple of pointers. Well, first of all, it's white's move. So white is going to burn one of his pawn moves. And the other thing is that this pawn has the option to move one or two squares. And so already those were pointers that this should be winning for me. Still got to get it right. So let me show you the game continuation f4 now don't copy but just match h5 so that threatens h4 to cripple those pawns so g3 now i can just match it a4 a5 g4 now don't exchange that would that would be a mistake <laughs> h4, here, Zugzwang, perfect. And here, Schussler resigned. Of course, now the king has to move back, and king takes pawn, and an easy win. Okay, let's look at an alternative. So this is the key position. We've just exchanged off into the pawn end game. So, for example, instead of f4, okay, what about h4? Well, then f5, again, I'm kind of, I'm doing exactly the same thing. This time I'm going to try to play f4, so g3. Let's play a6, a4, a5, g4. It's the mirror image of the position we just had. Nothing to do for white, and that's that. But yeah, the key thing here, of course, is to calculate all that before rook e6. And like I said, I'm... It's not a spectacular game, but I'm kind of proud of moments like this where I managed to calculate successfully. And But the whole way, um, you know, starting out in a position which frankly looks pretty equal or even maybe even slightly better for white, but I managed to somehow just create enough tension uh, just to gradually improve my chances in the position. So, yeah, I like that game very much. I hope you liked it too. Thanks for watching.